I'm not talking about discipline. I'm talking about abusing. It makes me so sad. So sad. They don't realize the precious gift they have. What God has given to them. And they take it for granted. Take it from someone who's lost all the grandparents. Both their parents. Both their children. Lost a grandchild. Lost a brother. Value the blessing God has placed upon you with family. Do not take your family for granted. Listen. Holidays are a wonderful time. Holidays are not the same for me and Susan as it is for everybody else. And I'm not saying we're down in the mouth about it, but it just don't have that same feeling as it did before so many of our loved ones passed on. Value your family. Don't take them for granted. Are you aware that if we died tomorrow, that company you work for could easily replace you in just a matter of a few days? Really? But the family that we leave behind will feel it, feel our loss for the rest of their lives. Life is too short for families not to get along. Something happens and families separate. Let your family know how much you love them and how much they mean to you. Make sure you emphasize what they mean to you. Because we won't have them around forever. I'm so thankful for my family. I've got a wife who loves me. I got grandkids. I think they love me. <laughs> I'm sure they do. I got family that's here right now, but I've got a lot of family on the other side. And just because they went on over doesn't mean they're not still family. They're still my family. I love them tremendously. I also thank God for sufferings. I know you're thinking, you could have left that one off. I thank God for sufferings. Life is tough, isn't it? And it gets harder as we get older. You would think life would be easier when you get older, but it's not. It's tougher. Amen? And so life is tough. And the Bible teaches us to praise God in the bad times as well as the good times. When everything's going well, we praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. But when we're going through the valley of despair, how many of us actually praise God and say, thank you, Jesus, for what I'm going through? I don't think very many of us do that. God deserves praise. Everybody can praise God when things are going good. But we're to praise God when things are not going so good as well. It's a matter of making a decision to praise God. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, not some things, not most things, but in everything, the good, the bad, the easy, the hard, the smooth, the rough, the mountaintop, or the valley below. Now think about Paul and Silas. They found themselves in a jail cell, beaten with many stripes, not given any food, Simply for obeying the word of God. Doing what they were doing for God's glory. Not for anything they done wrong, but for what they were doing right. The easiest thing in the world for them to have done is to question God. Why have you placed us in this dungeon? We were serving you. We're doing what you've asked us to do. Why have you allowed this to happen? That would have been so easy for them to do. But you know what they did instead? They had a prayer service. They started singing songs and started praising God and having prayers. And the jailers heard them and joined in. And the whole jailhouse was rocking and rolling. And a great earthquake came and the doors burst open and the prisoners started to flee. And Paul said, don't y'all go. No, huh? Because if we go, the prisoner, the jailer is going to have to give his life for ours. And so Paul influenced them to stay. When the jailer come down, he couldn't see. It was dark. He took out his sword and started to ram himself through the sword. And Paul cried out, do yourself no harm. We're all here inside. The jailer got a light, went in, saw every prisoner still there. 
And he was so overwhelmed, he fell on his knees and prayed, what must I do to be saved? And I'm so glad Paul had answered. Call upon the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Think about Job. Job had everything a man could ever want. And he had it all taken from him. His children were killed in a whirlwind. His health was gone. The easiest thing for Job to have done was to turn his back on God. But what did Job do? The Bible says Job knelt down and prayed, The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He worshiped God instead. When things are going at their worst for you, what are you going to do? Let me repeat that. When things are going at their worst for you, what are you going to do? What do you do when you have no money and the bills are high and the funds are low? I'll tell you what you do. You need to praise Him. What do you do when you're having marriage problems and it just seems like it's not getting any better, but in fact it's getting worse? I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to praise God. What do you do when you're facing health issues and sickness is taking hold of your body? And it seems like the doctors have no cure or answer for you. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to praise God. What do you do when you're facing death in the home and the love of your life has left or the children or the parents have gone that you love so dearly? What are you going to do? You're going to praise God. What do you do when you have so many troubles in your life that stress just comes and it seems like the doctors say don't stress out and they give you a bill and stress you even more? What do you do? You praise God. We say, God, bless me so I can praise you. And God says, praise me and I'll start blessing you. We got it backwards. I know some people right now who need to start praising God. Huh? Some of those are preachers. Church has talked about them so bad. Church has treated them and shown them no respect, no honor as a man of God. And so they vent their frustration by talking to other preachers or other people that listen about how church, how bad their church has treated them. What they need to do is praise God. Quit talking to people. Start talking to God and praise Him. Some of these that need to start praising God are church members. Someone has offended them. Someone has talked hateful to them or ignored them and what do they do? They, they start trying to receive comfort by going to other people and telling them how bad so-and-so has treated them, how bad uh, so-and-so has done them. And what they need to do is talk to God. Quit talking to other people. Talk to God. Take it to Him in prayer. Some of them are, are the folks that always tell other folks, hang in there, you're going to be all right. They're good at telling other people, when they're having problems, how to hang tough with Jesus. He'll bring you through. But when the problems happen to them, when the struggles of life are real and hits home, then they have a problem and they forget that good advice they told everybody else. But they need to hang in there and praise God. When Paul was suffering, he didn't understand it. He was God's man doing God's work, going from place to place. But the messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. And Paul couldn't understand it, but he went to God with it. God, please remove this from my life. And at first, God didn't answer. And he kept on praying, God, please remove this from my life. But God still wouldn't answer. He went to him a third time, please, God, give me an answer. Please remove this. And God answered him. But the answer was no. Did you just hear what I said? We're talking about one of the greatest Christians ever lived asked something from God. And God said no. And this is what Paul learned. Out of 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. This is what answer God gave him. No, Paul, I'm not going to take it away, but I'm going to give you grace that is sufficient to meet the need in your life for my strength is made perfect through your weakness. No matter what we're going through, God's grace is sufficient for all of us. We just need to hook up with God 
quit talking to other people, running other people down, telling how much we've been done bad, and start talking to God. Reach out to Him, for His grace is always sufficient. The presence, the love, and the flavor of the favor of God is sufficient to help the believer through anything that we are suffering or going through. Let us learn to thank God for our sufferings. For it brings us closer to God. Now here it is, the Thanksgiving season. We're to be a thankful people. But how thankful are we? Have we taken His blessings for granted? pray we haven't. We have so much to be thankful for, each and every one of us. Amen. So let us gather around this altar today with a thankful heart. Simply thank God for what He has blessed us with. All the many blessings of life. Let me invite you to come and just recall all your blessings. If you have nothing else to pray for, thank God for His love. Thank Jesus for the salvation He provided through His death on Mount Calvary. That's something all of us are thankful for. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you've never received Christ, I want to appeal to your heart right now. Would you please come on this day to offer God yourself for the love and the mercy and grace He has shown to you. And I know that most of us here are good people. But it's not goodness that gets you to heaven. It's not goodness that gets you eternal life. It's accepting Jesus and what He did for us on Mount Calvary. Would you come today and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior? For others of us in here, maybe we've grown bitter or neglectful. And we've quit thanking God for His blessings. Would you come back today, rededicate your life, and offer God yourself so He'll restore to you the joy of your salvation. For others here today, you're going through some hardships, some trouble, some emotional pain. Come today and ask Jesus to help you. He beckons us to cast all our care upon Him. Would you come? For whatever need you have, I know that Jesus is the answer. And this altar is a good place to ask Him. If you have no other reason, just come and thank Him for what He's done. Would you come? Let's all stand. Step out right now. Come on now. Allow the Holy Spirit to have control of your heart today. I will tell you, stay right there, you're all right. But be thankful for what God has done. Would you come?
Not long ago, a preacher closed out his revival. He boarded a train to start on his long journey home. He sat down beside a young man and tried to start a conversation with him, making some comment about the weather, but the young man wouldn't reply, so they rode on in silence. After a while, the young man got in sobs, just crying. The preacher leaned forward and said, Son, I'm a minister, and I'd like to help you in some way if I can. The young man said, I'm so ashamed of myself, preacher. I've been so mean and cruel to my parents all my life. Even got so bad as to strike my dad with my fist. And my dad told me I had to leave home for mama's sake. And I reckon I've done just about every mean thing I can do since then. But last week, the old tent revival meeting. Some friends of mine had invited me and I didn't want to go, but they kept pressing me, so I went. And the words that the preacher spoke seemed like they were aimed right at me. And I couldn't wait for the altar call. I went running to the altar, weeping and crying. And the minister come down and share with me salvation through Christ. I told him how bad I had done my mom and dad. And he suggested I write a letter and tell what I've done. And that I would be on this train. If they would accept me back home to let me know. The preacher said, well, how are they going to let you know, son? The preacher, I told them, there's an old apple tree by these tracks, and if they wanted me to get off, just to hang a white handkerchief on one of the limbs where I would see it, and that would be my cue to get off. So they were getting close to his home, and he started breaking out in tears again. And the preacher said, what's wrong, son? He, he said, just around that bend is my home, preacher. And I can't bear to look. I'm not sure what I'm going to find. And the preacher said, that's all right. I'll be your eyes and I'll look for you. So as they ran to the bend and got closer, the preacher broke out in a great big smile. He said, son, you don't have anything to worry about. It, just look, it looks like that old apple tree is in full blossom. There's handkerchiefs hanging on every limb. And not only that, there's a Dear old mom and dad waving a great big white bed sheet. Come on home, son. We still love you. And you know, that's the story of our Heavenly Father. No matter what you've done in your life, He still loves us. He still beckons for us to come on home. We're going to do one more verse. Would you come? If no one comes, you're closing it out. But this is your opportunity to come. Would you come today? comments or testimonies you'd like to share with us? I want to, I want to thank you, Lord, for being passing that you all. It's a preaching from the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Did y'all want to come down today? All right, come on down. <laughs> Amen. Well, anybody else have a testimony or comment before we close out? Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You know one else. Well, we have these two, and uh, Jeff's not with us this morning, but we'll get Jeff a little bit later. But Brother Mark has been coming, and Miss uh, Sister Marie has been coming for quite a while, and they would like to unite with our church, Ocean View Baptist. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So they want to move their letter to Ocean View Baptist, the right here. You're the same way. So what's the pleasure of the church? All in, all, in, all in favor, say aye. Any opposed, likewise. See how fast that was. <laughs> Amen. You have anything you'd like to say? No, I just want to thank all of y'all for your good kindness. And any time that I can help you, I'm here. Amen. Amen. So Mark, you got anything? Well, I, I have felt home with it. I really have. And uh, people have been really kind. But if, if our friend Rob was here, was here a couple weeks ago, he would object. He's just <laughs> I think he's gonna come here, so just just watch out for Rob. He's loud and a good guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Anybody got any words encouragement for these folks? Hey, welcome, welcome. Well y'all come by and give them right hand of fellowship, extend your love to them. And anything I can ever do, I'd be glad for you to do it. God bless you. each and every one. God bless you. Thank you. Right, Mark, you moving over and move closer to her. Brother Albert, would you close us in prayer? Y'all come by and shake their hand, hug their neck.